hello and now welcome to the talk on understanding blood grouping and transfusion as we all know it is a very very essential part of the hematology practical as well as theory part now we all are well aware that blood is a liquid connective tissue which is responsible for transportation of almost everything across the body the importance of its normalcy is very well known to us the blood grouping or the blood typing is based on the presence or the absence of inherited antigenic substances on the surface of the red blood cells that is it is the structural presence of substances on the rbcs which is responsible for deciding the blood group now the abo blood group system which is the popularly accepted or known system in modern education is a system which considers the presence or absence of antigens on the surface of the rbc and this system has brought medical science a lot ahead in deciding the treatment management and even giving life to the patient now this abo blood types they are also present in few other animals particularly animals which are of similar development and genetic makeup like humans the chimpanzees and the gorillas the gorillas now the dependence of the determination of this blood grouping as we said is on the immunological reaction between antigen and antibody which means that externally nobody can says say that anyone belongs to a particular blood group it is only via a reaction which is the immunological reaction which we have to perform to check and verify the blood group now the antigens which are naturally present on the surface of the rbc are also known as agglutinogens because they have the property of bringing about agglutination of the rbc in case the antibody of the same group is accidentally infused into the blood now as per dr karl landsteiner who is also called the father of blood grouping antigen is a substance which is present on the red blood cell and its corresponding antibody will never be present in the plasma because if the corresponding antibody is present the antigen antibody reaction will take place and the circulating blood will change its behavior or we can say it will be unfit to do the transportation and other activities so whichever antigen we have in our blood naturally we will always either have the opposite antibody or we will not have any antibody at all now based on the presence or absence of the antigens a and b the classification of the blood groups is into four that is the blood group a blood group b blood group ab and blood group o that is if antigen a is present then the blood group is a and the antibody is beta that is the opposite antibody so there will be no reaction between the two similarly in blood group b the antibody will be alpha if the blood group is ab that is both the antigens are present then no antibody will be found in the plasma whereas if the blood group is o that is absence of antigen a and b then both the antibodies alpha and beta will be found in the serum now it is very important to know that there is another antigen that is the rh factor also known as the antigen d which is present and this antigen is either present or absent and in natural or normal conditions there is no antibody present for this rh antigen so rh positive is most commonly represented in any of the combinations of a b ab and o especially in the indian population so if we look at the chart we can see that a blood group has antigen a which antigen is missing b is missing and antibody is anti b similarly with b antigen is b missing antigen is a and antibody is anti a o blood group has no antigen and 
antibodies are both a and b whereas in ab ab blood group we have both the antigens and so no antibody is present we can have a pictorial depiction as well you can see a single biconcave disc shaped rbc the antigens have been depicted with the help of structures which show the shape or you can say it is a identifying feature antigen a antigen b are present on the surface in ab we have both and in o we have now the person whenever we come to why perform the blood grouping we realize that the person who gives the blood is the donor and the person who receives the blood is the recipient before we perform the blood donation or recipient work we have to first do the blood grouping that is whichever blood group the donor and recipient belong to and even if they have the same blood group then we have to go for the cross matching that is both the samples are artificially mixed and seen for compatibility it's been observed that rbc of o group has no antigen and so the agglutination does not occur with any group of blood so that is why we used to call blood group o as the universal donor because when they are infused into any bo body's blood there is no antigenic reaction with the patient's or the recipient's blood which will be initiated and so it was called the universal donor and on the same line ab was called the universal recipient because they do not have antibodies for either a or b so this was a old concept which has been changed over the years now and now we have the concept of cross matching whatever may be the similarity or likeliness in the blood groups now if there is an incompatible reaction a mistake in the transfusion then adverse reaction may be a minor reaction it may be a skin rash a fever but it may also lead to serious conditions like renal failure shock and even death so whenever we have to perform this transfusion reaction we have to be very very particular and we have to do all the necessary checking part now we all have heard about a condition in children the newborn child which is known as the erythroblastosis fetalis it is also known as the hemolytic disease of the newborn now it is a disease in which there is a transplacental transmission of maternal antibodies that is the mother transmits certain antibodies to the growing fetus which become uh, erythroblastotic or hemolytic to the developing fetus now if the mother is rh negative the father is rh positive and she conceives a child who is rh positive in the first delivery during the process of delivery there is mixing of some amount of fetal blood with maternal blood and this causes the production of antibodies against the rh positive blood in the mother's blood now in the second pregnancy she already has these antibodies and now again if the child is rh positive the antibodies will transmit to the child and will produce the agglutination or hemolytic reaction which may be very dangerous life threatening or which may be having little impacts which can be corrected by uh, transfusion of rh negative blood into the child or absolute replacement of the uh, blood now the process of blood transfusion is a one in which for various medical conditions we replace the components of blood which are either lost which are deficient or which are required in larger numbers which may be the blood cells which may be the clotting factors which may be the plasma and before that we are supposed to test the donated blood has to be tested the blood which has been donated is collected it is undergone with centrifugation processes and after the centrifugation processes the different substances are separated and as per requirement the whole blood or the component of the blood is transfused now all the donated blood is checked for any disease like the diseases which are transmitted via the blood they are also checked for the presence of antibodies and the compatibility and if it is observed that there are certain Uh, substances or pathogenic substances which are present then the blood is 
treated in such a way that they reduce. Now, when do we require transfusion? Very importantly, in cases of accidents, because in most cases of accidents, if the blood flow is more than 30% of the total volume, we can call it 1.5 liters in the adult, then it becomes life threatening. In such conditions, we have to immediately transfuse blood. There may be cases of anemia, particularly associated with pregnancy and at the time of delivery. There may be hemorrhages due to other causes like some diseases, some rupture in, uh, internally. So we can see that transfusion is necessary for saving the life. It becomes life saving in cases of burns, surgery, traumas, hemorrhages, anemia. Now what do we have to see before we transfuse blood? That the donor has to be healthy, the blood is, should be free of any diseases, compatibility of blood group should be there, matching and cross matching have to be done, compatibility of ABO and RH systems both. Now, again, when we are doing this transfusion, the transfusion part, we have to be very, very particular about the sterility or the safety of the blood. The temperature of the blood being transfused should also be the same as the body temperature. Transfusion is always a slow process so that the body accepts it gradually. It should never be done in a hurried way. Also, it is a load to the heart if it is done in a hurried manner. Okay. There might be certain reactions even after taking so much of precautions and being so particular, there might be certain reactions which come up with the transfusion, rea uh, rea transfusion process. In that case, the doctor in charge or the hematologist is going to take full care. You have to simply report the observations or whatever you are feeling. Now, there is another thing which is important which is called as the exchange transfusion. It is performed in rare cases when we have to completely replace the patient's blood. Say for example, in erythroblastosis fetalis it is done. There are also few rare conditions like sickle cell anemia uh, whereby we have to change the blood of the person and that is known as the replacement transfusion. And replacement transfusion at that time is basically used as a life-saving measure because whatever attempts were made to improve the performance of the blood or to bring down the desired uh, adverse reactions is not responding. So these are kind of last efforts to give life to the person. So now another thing which I would like to repeat here is that while you are performing the check of the blood group in the laboratory, take a clean glass free, uh, grease free slide, put droplets of blood, add the antisera. Whichever antisera shows agglutination, it means that antigen is present in the blood. So if antisera A and RH show agglutination, it means the blood group is A positive. If antisera B and RH show agglutination, it is B positive. If antisera A shows agglutination but no RH agglutination, then A negative. Similarly, if A and B both show agglutination and RH also, then AB positive. A and B both show agglutination but not RH, then AB negative. Neither A nor B, none of them shows agglutination but RH shows, then O positive. And if no, neither A nor B nor RH, none of them show agglutination, then it is blood group O. So it is a simple phenomenon to understand what the blood group is, its importance. It should be known to everybody and that is why it is mentioned on the driving license. So that in case of any emergency, we can provide the desired blood to the person. Thank you so much.